We're solving this problem. An automobile weighing 4,000 pounds is driven down a 5 degree incline at a speed of 60 miles per hour. When the brakes are applied, causing a constant total braking force applied by the road on the tires of 1,500 pounds. Determine the distance traveled by the automobile as it comes to a stop. Let's sketch this out. We have the car shown here and it's at the first time point. I'll write a 1 here. It's moving at 60 miles per hour down this slope. At a later point, it's at the second time point. At a second time point, the, tr the car is traveling 0 miles per hour and it has traveled a total distance x between those the, the first time point and the second time point. Now we're, how are we going to solve this? Well we're going to write down the, the uh, initial kinetic energy, add in the change in work and kinetic energy between those two time points, 1 and 2, and set that equal to the final kinetic energy. Now the final kinetic energy is going to be 0, because it's going 0 miles per hour. So what we really need to do here is set up this initial kinetic energy, which is T1 is just going to be equal to a half times the mass of the car times the velocity squared. Now the common problems here would be confusing our units. And we need the mass, not the weight. The weight is 4,000 pounds. We need the mass, so it's going to be um, 4,000 pounds divided by g, 32.2 feet per second squared. The velocity is 60 miles per hour, but let's keep the units consistent, so we're going to have to convert the velocity from 60 miles per hour to feet per second. So once we do that, we can just plug those values in and calculate T1. For U1 to 2, we have two components. One is just a constant, so we've got a constant total braking force of 1,500 pounds. And so we'll write this one, 1,500 pounds is the, the force applied, and the energy is the force times the distance. The distance is x. That's how far we go. So that's x. And then the second factor we have here is the, f the fact the change in potential energy because this car is traveling downhill. How far does it travel downhill? Easy enough. We have, uh, well, so the change in potential energy is the, the mass times the gravity times the distance, height traveled, so the, the times the height traveled, or the height difference. And we can write that as just x times the sine of 5 degrees. So what we need to do is convert the velocity from that 60 miles per hour into feet per second. That's easy enough to do. We should know how to do this. We uh, put in the number of feet here, 5,280 feet divided by one mile, so that's a, really a quantity of one we're multiplying it by. It's just changing our units, uh, and we do something similar for the hour. We've got one hour, and that is equal to 3,600 seconds. So we multiply this out, 60 times 5,280, divided by 3,600, and we get that the velocity is 88 feet. Per second. I want to show you another tool to use to do this conversion. This is the website Wolfram Alpha. Um, it's, as they say, a knowledge engine, similar to a, a search engine, but it, it calculates knowledge. So let's put in, we just have to put in 60 miles per hour and see what it's what that equals. And it'll tell you here, it'll do all sorts of conversions. Um, 96.56 kilometers per hour, 52 knots, 26 meters per second, kilometers per minute, blah, blah. and so it's got lots of different ways you could express that. 
none of that helps us. We want feet per second. So we get a little more specific here in feet per second. And let's see if it'll tell us that. Um, right, and so it's converting 60 miles per hour to feet per second, and there's our result, 88 feet per second. Let's finish up our computation here. So we need, um, let's see, for, for T1 we have a half times the mass times the velocity squared. T1 is half. Now the mass was 4,000 pounds divided by 32.2 feet per second squared times the 88 and this if you work this out it works out to be 48 481,000 foot pounds wait I made an error here do you see that what did I do well, here's the equation, T1 equals a half mv squared. What did I write? A half mv. This one has to be squared. There. Now plug that in your calculator, and you should get 481,000 foot-pounds. Let's go back up here and work on this um, change in potential energy and work done. Minus 1,500x plus mg. This mg is the weight, so that's 400, 4,000 pounds. Uh, so we can multiply these all out and you get this minus 1151x so we're back to this equation and we can take a look at that uh, put it back down here we've got t1 we've worked it out already Let's see. So what, all we have to do is write down this equation. That's the 481,000 foot-pounds plus this minus 1151x. And that should also be in foot-pounds, where x is in feet. And that equals 0. Now we can calculate what x is and I get that it's 418 feet. So what did that mean again, 418 feet? Well, we have this car traveling at 60 miles an hour. You apply the brakes, and it takes 418 feet to stop.